Hey, welcome back, I'm Lai. Have you ever thought about this question? Ever since the 1950s, humans have sent so many satellites to orbit Earth. We have sent in total six successful missions to Jupiter, five to Saturn, landed seven on Mars. Voyager 2 in particular has even reached Uranus and Neptune. And finally, in 2015, New Horizon reached Pluto, ending its nine years exploration journey successfully. We have literally explored every corner of our solar system. But do we really understand our Earth enough? Have you ever thought about the question that how many satellites are flying in the sky right now? Which ones are flying closest to Earth? And most importantly, why? This is in many ways a very interesting question, but it requires all of us to abandon the binary idea of the Earth and the outer space. Our Earth atmosphere is in fact continuous and it gets thinner as we go further up. Think of it this way. The Earth atmosphere is composed of particles, 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and 1% argon. As satellites go higher up, the Earth atmosphere gets thinner with less air particles. Therefore, common sense tells us that the outer space is probably the line above which none of the Earth particles exist, right? Well, no. What's agreed to be the line that separates our Earth atmosphere and the outer space is the Kármán line that is 100 kilometers above sea level. However, our Earth atmosphere extends far beyond 100 kilometers. We can even find air particles up to 190,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Therefore, this understanding gives us a much more interesting topic for discussion because contrary to popular belief, satellites can't go as low as it wants. The lower you go, the higher the number of air particles and thus higher atmospheric drag. That's why, in fact, no satellites are currently flying near the common line. Satellites must balance between the benefit of being closer to Earth and the cost of getting dragged down constantly by air particles. To tackle this challenge, communication satellites nowadays are usually flying at around 500 to 1,500 kilometers altitudes to send signals faster without getting too much air resistance. Anything that's flying below 500 kilometers altitude will experience significant atmospheric drag, so flying lower than that has to have some unique benefits. So let me first of all give you a very famous example. The International Space Station's orbit is around 400 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Pretty far away if you think about it, but as shown in this orbit graph, it has to perform multiple adjustment reboosts every year to prevent itself from dropping back to Earth. Those sudden spikes in orbit heights indicate that. A lot of hustle and a lot of cost. So why do spacecrafts like the International Space Station want to fly in lower orbit in the first place? Well, in the case of the International Space Station, its 400 km orbit is designed for the safety of our astronauts. Space radiation cannot reach this orbit because of the Earth's magnetic field. International Space Station can't afford to go higher up because radiation would endanger our astronauts' lives. However, 400 km is not even close to the lowest we can go. There is a more functional benefit that comes with flying even lower information gets transmitted faster that way. It's simple physics, the lower the satellites, the faster information gets transmitted. For example, SpaceX Starlink project plans to send 7,000 satellites to as low as 340 kilometers altitude. This is a tenth of the altitude at which GTO communication satellites are flying. And with this lower altitude, Starlink satellites will provide us with internet at lower latency and hence, better performance. This will come in handy when it's competing with cable internet providers. However, as far as today's question is concerned, 340 kilometers altitude is still not the lowest satellites can go to maintain a stable orbit. It turns out we do have another unique reason to go even lower than 340 kilometers. The lowest we have gone is around 200 kilometers. At this orbit, satellites experience significant atmospheric drag, so there has to be an equally significant application to justify this cost. This interactive website made by Quads shows us quite well the rationale behind sending satellites to a very low orbit of around 200 kilometers. As shown here, the International Space Station is right here moving mildly up and down at around 400 kilometers altitude. 
The satellites orbiting at even lower altitudes are these huge blue ones and this small purple one. The huge blue ones belong to the United States, the small purple one belongs to Russia. Their purpose is labeled as Earth Observatory, but I'm pretty sure they're all military reconnaissance satellites that are more commonly known as spy satellites. These United States satellites are also very interestingly codenamed Kiho, perhaps indicating the resolution of the picture it takes. I wouldn't be surprised if they have the capability to tell what types of sandwich President Putin eats every day. After all, the United States spy satellites have long been revealed to have the capability to discern objects that are half a meter in length. And this resolution is the 1970s number, we're now in 2018. You do the math. So coming back to the question, among all 1100 satellites flying in the sky right now, spy satellites from the United States take the crown for being able to orbit the Earth at the closest distance of around 200 kilometers. This is such a hard orbit to maintain, and I, you know, I just don't have time to talk about the orbit in particular in today's video, but I would love to make a video focusing on the American spy satellites in the future. If you guys would love that videos, uh, let me know in the comment down below. Also, uh, if you know any other even more secretive satellites flying even closer to Earth uh, than these spy satellites from the United States, definitely leave me a comment down below. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to follow me at Lay Creatives and don't forget to support me on Patreon. As always, I'm Lai. I'll catch you guys later.